All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and I also have on here my co host, Masei Seki. And Hello. today we also have uh, our guest, of course, and many of you might know this wonderful human being. Her name is Xuan Chan. Hey, Xuan. Uh, hey, hey, everyone. Hey, hey Bobby. Hey, Masei. Just wanted to show everybody <laughs> your awesome work. You could follow Xuan at Xuan Chan on Instagram. Uh, some oh. really beautiful. Sorry, I'm not gonna embarrass mm -hmm. you. I didn't uh, tell you. I was <laughs> show your stuff. Oh, Ben Morrow. What was that for again? Uh, yeah. Was that for a magazine? Uh, Fire Starter. Fire right Starter magazine. Yeah. Uh, cool. That's very cool. Oh, I know this dude. Right on. <laughs> That's good one. That's great. Very some cool. schoolism homework in there. Oh no way. <laughs> Wow. And you got your totally different stuff. Some yeah, I like that series. Yeah. Aww, thank you. Amazing. And uh, so what is the 90 minute art challenge? You might be asking 90 minute art challenge is all about doing art 90 minutes. We give you a subject. Today's subject is Lisa from Blackpink. I actually didn't know her name until people started to talk about it in the chat going, is that Lisa from Blackpink? I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess it is, right? Um, yeah, so the other day, Andrea Blasic, yesterday, Andrea Blasic. So you can find uh, the 90 Minute Art Challenge on Tumblr by searching 90 Min Art Challenge on Tumblr, okay? And then when you're done, you would upload it to Instagram where we can find them all hashtag it 90 min art challenge for us to be able to find it all find them all and look boom mm. we also showcase a bunch of our favorites i love this one it's so yeah, that was good it's so on point you know like all it's crazy looking it's awesome but it totally looks like him at the same time mm. his eyes <laughs> it's like looking into your soul or looking so into good. like the abyss. <laughs> the abyss. <laughs> what a good uh, actor uh, in that movie. I don't care like what you might have thought about the movie, but the acting in it is phenomenal. I really like that movie. Uh, okay, next one here. Wonderful. This is of Toronto, where Masse and I oh. live. Uh, and this one is from yesterday. Great nice. job. Mm. Here's another one. This one is more classic, Darth Vader, which is fun. You know, it's just 90 minutes. And look at this person. Excellent, right? He's oh. like incorporating something else in there, making the lighting yeah. all match and everything. Really taking the reference and learning from it, bring new things in, mm -hmm. creating. This nice. one is kind of neat too. This kind of reminds me of what you did, Masei, how you changed the lighting and everything. Very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Nighty Mac veteran, <laughs> Hari from Vienna, cool. killing it. That was cool. So like funny. So funny. From this to this. And that's what the 90 Minute Art Challenge is all about. It's not restricted to any rules mm -hmm. and things like that or materials that you need to use. It's just, let's do some art and constantly. And if you really, really love art, I know many of you are already on this already, but like, um, want to make sure that everybody knows, you know, there's been thousands of people that have subscribed to Schoolism subscriptions because you get a full year of education right now you get it for less than two hundred dollars you just have to go to schoolism.com and you click on the banner and you know proceed and then when you do that with a subscription you actually get access to every single course here including mine digital painting with bobby chu that's me all right and all of these other courses Right, the newest one, Andrea Blasic. And then there's the artist workouts. And there's many other courses coming almost like every every month, it seems. There's a new class mm -hmm. coming up. All right. And uh, the other thing I want to mention here is get painting. Okay, so we're going to get painting right now. 
and uh, we have 90 minutes to do so. You'll see the three of us struggling through this uh, black pink yeah. challenge yeah. here. Lots to do on this one, right? Lots to do. Yeah, a lot of information and different like materials. Mm -hmm. and... and totally different yeah. lighting on her, right? Like that's a local light hitting her and everything else is very much in, in like this stylized uh, night darkness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and she's got a very uh, distinct face too, like distinct uh, features. On that <laughs> angle, I remember going, ah, angle, oh, yeah. you know, her yeah. head is just tilted. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I ask you guys, like, what, what you, you guys were, like, thinking when you started? Like, what's the point of the study? Because I know we all wanted different things out of this study. So I was just wondering, like, uh, you know, going in, what, what you guys wanted out of out of this one? Messe? Um, well, the reason why I chose this subject, because most of the times I choose the references, uh, was because... Why, um, must say? <laughs> <laughs> like, we haven't really done this kind of um, look before, yeah. where there's a strong light um, and the strong shadows, um, and also, like, the colors that were used, um, like, kind of, like, um, like almost pastelish, but, like, some parts mm -hmm. are very saturated. And I just thought like the clothes she was wearing was like the especially the like the diamond like the, the jewelry part. The top. I thought that was really cool. So it's like how can we uh, work with ninety minutes and try to achieve that whole look in like mm -hmm. a very efficient way. Yeah, and for beginners and such, or if you just want to, you know, uh, you don't have to do the whole entire image even. Right. Mm -hmm. We've seen when people would crop in and stuff like that on like Discord. And by the way, Discord, what are you talking about, Bobby? Is you guys got a Discord channel? Who was that? Who said that? Yes, we do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what you're looking for? Well, you know, at the bottom of the screen there it says Discord. If you go to bit.ly slash LBX Discord, you will find these wonderful people holy smokes everybody's drawing and painting and you know having a great time so you can hop into discord follow uh or you know join the lightbox expo discord channel and then you can click on live voice chat we will be chatting with these people very very soon and you can join in on one of the streams everybody's gonna be Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is very fun because not only are you doing art, you're chatting with everybody. And whoa, oh, what? Yeah, traditional. Wow. Yeah. With collage. Really cool. With collage? Yeah, it looks like a collage there too. Holy. Oh ambitious that's awesome mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these people man right and the people that are painting together they're all using magma by the way magma mm -hmm. studio if you see in the uh bottom left hand corner you can see what is magma studio you can paint with friends and all that stuff hey do you guys want to hop over to um discord now and we'll mute the zoom sounds okay good. sure okay Hey, Discord people. I hope, uh, Hello. oh shoot, my audio. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I always forget like some setting recently. And let me turn this thing off so we can see how the painting's going. I'll show you how it all kind of started as well. Oh, we all kind of started with different shades of blue. That's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> something poetic there yeah <laughs> um all right so why don't we also mention questions i'm sorry there's so many things to mention these days but want to make this as interactive as possible you can ask questions either in discord you could do that live you could do that right now or you could go to slido.com and you could hashtag chewstream and you could ask your questions in there so mm -hmm. um 
Discord peeps, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions that we want to start off with here? Or any topics of conversation? Are you guys doing more 90-minute art challenges? No. We, oh, we've been... So, regularly, Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, but Masse and I, we've been just doing them as much as we can. Uh, we were just talking about this just before the stream, or really i was just talking about it i was saying <laughs> uh i haven't and this reminds me of subway sketching back in the day i would go on the subways of in toronto and i would just meet whoever wants to meet up i'd make like a little announcement and and whoever wants to learn for free i would teach them for free right and it's just really like put in the effort come out do this thing and i'll help you if you if you want to learn from me or we could just paint and draw. And through that process of doing that every single Sunday for five years, that's how I really learned my own kind of unique way of uh, drawing and painting clothes. Because especially in Toronto, you have the four seasons. So you have thin materials, which is all sorts of different types of thin materials, to bulky materials to materials that wrap around materials that are stuffed with materials because it's winter time now you know so with the 90 minute art challenge again it's like i'm doing these repetitive things these repetitive activities different subjects right totally different paintings but painting to learn which generally like most of us stop doing when we become a quote unquote professional. And so because of that, I've just noticed such huge kinds of uh, improvements in my thinking, in my process. And you're going to see, you will see uh, 90 Mac people because the future bunch of streams, I'm actually like, I'm going to toot my own horn if you don't mind. And we should all go <laughs> to celebrate our victories here. <laughs> but yeah, the last couple, I was like, yep, I'm doing this. I'm doing this on a different <laughs> level. It's pretty awesome. And everybody will experience that, you know, as long as you keep up with it. Yeah. I, I love those um, light bulb moments where after you do a study, you kind of like, um, it reflects on your own personal work. And you can see like the improvement. So it makes me not want to stop uh, doing these 90 minute challenges. And speaking of stopping, what happened here, Shwan? Do you remember? Was it like you had some issues? <laughs> Like with the dry? Yeah, with the painting, like you stopped for a good, you know, few minutes or I something. Think, I think I was trying, I was looking over at you guys and I was like, wait, why is everybody painting the background first, you know? And then oh. I started questioning my, like, oh. uh, way of approaching this. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wait, should I, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. then I, and then I was like, yeah, Let's yeah, I think I was thinking that. about that. Let's talk about that. And, you know, like uh, Discord people, I'd love to kind of hear your take on this as well. Because that is kind of, it's, it's interesting. You can learn, you know, you have this advantage to paint with everybody because you can see how everybody else does stuff. But it's almost like falling into a spider web sometimes. You know, it's like you got to stay in your own lane at the same time, which I've, mm. I've also fell into that trap many times, actually. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you guys all have different approaches. It looks like, like, uh, I guess Sharon's doing more construction. So, is there what makes you guys decide when you start whether you're going to go more start with the background, lay in color and value, or do mm -hmm. sort of set out the construction lines first? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't do any construction lines. I started off with the background because I didn't want to paint around the figure. And I was just thinking, mm. I also remember why I did the background first, because I was thinking, oh, it'd be simple. It'd just be quick, you know, and it <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't. Sure, do you want to talk about why? Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I think for me, like, 
I'm 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 pretty bad at uh well not so bad but I I'm I'm not as comfortable with like environmental stuff, and I saw these uh, buildings as a way to frame the character like it's all about the character so I thought I should get the character right first and then the rest is like collateral to frame the scene yeah that that was my thinking anyways yeah. Um, and I guess for me, um, this is a, like from experiencing doing like a bunch of these studies is that every uh, I used I used to draw the character first and try to paint the character first, but and but I realized like the values were always off because um, whatever was surrounding the subject wasn't established first. So I had this like tendency of just not like um, kind of like messing with my own eyes by trying to figure out the values when um, I haven't really figured out the overall like mood and environment mm. and color and stuff. So that, that's just personally like my way of uh, approaching this painting. Um, it makes so much sense because like the setting also influences like uh, the character, right? That's, that's mm -hmm. like um, a way of saying like you want to make sure the character sits in the same world as the right. setting. Yeah, especially with this illustration or this uh, reference, right, everybody? Like, it's so blue. How can you not address the blue? Like, you got it. Yeah. Or else everything else would be, it's, it'll be almost like handicapping yourself the rest of the way. It's like trying mm -hmm. to draw this whole entire thing from starting from the earring outwards or something like that. Like, you just don't. <laughs> it, that's a hard route. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I forget how I knew this was black pink. I think, um, oh, there was like a documentary on. Hey, Kate right? told yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was the one that put on. She keeps me, uh, you know, present in the in the know, uh, <laughs> as much as she can, because otherwise I wouldn't know anything. To be totally frank with you. Yeah, I actually watched that doc documentary too. It was it was uh, interesting, like the way I felt at the very end. It's like, like it was cool how successful they were. Uh, it's just I kind of feel bad because it doesn't seem like they're completely like enjoying it because they just grew big so fast yeah. and like they had no time to rest and it's just like fame everywhere. So yeah, yeah I hope. I hope uh, they have a lot of like pictures and stuff before they were famous, because that's um. the stuff that you can't get again, you know. And actually, uh, on that point, well, kind of on that point, I was saying, I was talking with uh, my brother Ben, and I was saying, you know, you guys should take some pictures of uh, you with masks on, you know, for for your daughter and you know when she grows up and maybe her kids to have this record you know it's just mm. um chris sanders he showed me he sent me this photo of him or no not him but i think his like grandmother or great grandmother in 1918 right with all of the friends did i show you this i might have showed you this uh picture Masse, but it was his relative in 1918 when the spanish flu was like you know all over the place killing like almost five percent of the world population and to see like who's wearing a mask and who's not it's really interesting mm. it's really interesting you know like we might think oh this is such a messed up time right now but like honestly i really i think we'll all appreciate kind of seeing those memories later like, oh, that's how it was mm -hmm. at that time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Historical. This. Yeah. Yeah. You remember, it, it Masay, one, one year, it was like a uh, blackout during Christmas all the way into New Year's. It was like a week of like, and some yeah. a bunch of people, more than a week of no electricity yeah yeah that was like it was in toronto it was really crazy there was uh, i think it was an ice storm 
Yeah, an ice or, storm yeah. kind of covered everything with like inches of ice. So it Just toppled big. it toppled like like an insane percentage of the trees in Toronto mm -hmm. and many of them fell over on on power lines and stuff like that. So many of us didn't have electricity. Um, yeah. yeah, and it was like yeah, it was winter time, it was cold. Mm -hmm. uh, I was Not one eating. of the lucky lucky people to have my neighborhood um, you know, up and running with oh. electricity. Yeah. yeah, because I know some friends who had to like leave their house to go to their other friend's house to just stay warm. I had to go to my brother-in-law's house for at least the night, I remember. Yeah. Because it was like freezing. Yes. But mm -hmm. we took pictures. I wish I took more pictures. That was my whole entire point. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not just like yeah. the happy things that you'll appreciate later on in life. It's mm -hmm. also just the interesting or crazy things that, that we all kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to look back at the bad, quote unquote, bad stuff to appreciate things that we have now. Yeah, especially if you're just starting 90 minute art challenges, <laughs> take oh. a picture, you know, like this is, <laughs> this is before you became absolutely crushing it and awesome. Mm hmm. I I also like uh looking at old like artwork from oh, college days. Those it's like I cringe at it, but I'm like, wow! I'm so proud of me. <laughs> like I'm I'm so proud of myself. Like look how much uh, I've improved and changed. And it's awesome that like um even though there are times that I kind of like I wanted to stop, but I just kind of like kept going with it and. Yeah, it's it's nice seeing those like preserved um, artwork, like especially traditional ones, because you're like, yeah. Wow. yeah <laughs> before I forget, can I mention something? Something really awesome that is happening tomorrow. Yeah. So we have. Oh yeah. On you know, I was mentioning the Lightbox Expo Discord channel. Well, we're going to be doing the Holly Jolly Paintathon, the very first one. Be a part of history here on the Discord <laughs> channel. It's going to be so great. Uh, so tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern time or Pacific time, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. We're going to start the Holly Jolly Paintathon. Okay, so that means like you come on, meet us at uh, that time or slightly before that time even um, on Discord. And we'll be forming groups, groups and painting collaboratively in Magma, painting a painting uh, based on the theme that we will announce on tomorrow. And you have 24 hours. Your whole group has 24 hours. And because you're in a group, it doesn't mean that you have to paint for 24 hours. You could just paint normally and then the rest of the group can pick up the slack when you're not painting and so on and so forth. You know, creating an amazing, wonderful piece of art in 24 hours. Uh, that's on Discord tomorrow and that's going to be really, really fun. Winner. What does the win winning um, group get? Well, if you do it, you're all winners in my books. But the, <laughs> the one group that the judges will select, which will be selected by Carlo Ortiz, everybody. Whoa, dang. Uh, Masei and I and <laughs> Jim Demonakos, we're gonna be choosing the winner. The winner, the, the winning group will be featured, the whole entire group will be featured on Lightbox Expo, social media, nice huge spotlight on the artists behind our favorite things. And you will be invited to sketch and paint with us in a collaborative way. We want to do something collaborative too with you, with the whole entire group in a live stream on YouTube, just like this. Uh, you know, one of the best things about doing these kind of things is really discovering new artists and uh, putting some well-deserved spotlight on you. So come on mm -hmm. out. That was a lot of talking, so. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> hey, I remember this part. So what I did here was like, there's so much going on. 
right? There's so much going on. So I'm really trying to simplify as much as I can. So I put down, uh, you know, a darker kind of tone for the jacket, and then I'm putting in an even darker tone for the simplified kind of shadows, main shadows mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. you were painting this like upside down by your painting. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm still painting upside down, <laughs> I believe, at this mm -hmm. point. At I, this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why the neck looks so long, I think. When I start to correct yeah. everything, that's when everything has flipped back. I actually, yeah, now I think everything flipped back. Mm. It's just a really great way of laying everything down very, very quickly. You know, you don't get caught up in the, um, what am I painting? Mm. I, I remember um, because she has like such a specific uh like face i was like okay i probably can't like capture her completely so i'm just gonna caricature her a bit and do it a bit more like stylized and that kind of gave me um more flexibility yeah more, like, i see free. you spending you know some like uh time doing the drawing it's cool yeah that part was fun yeah, I've been really trying to get away from doing drawings at all in my paintings these days, which is different than what I'm used to, mm -hmm. but it's it's actually, I'm getting more and more used to it. You want to talk about your like shortcuts? Yes. Uh, kind, uh, you know what? I would say almost no, because a lot of times, a lot of times you're totally right. And you know you're right, but uh, sometimes how I end up doing it is like it's more like it's fuzzy in the beginning, so mm. you can't really distinguish any particular lines or borders, right? Like now, mm. now I'm starting to get into more lines. I guess for this one, you're right. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Well. This is very interesting too. You're, you're working on those um, skin tones quite a bit, Chuan. Do you want to talk about that as uh, well? Yeah, I remember like uh, the particular thing that I really liked about this study when Mase first showed it to me was how cool her skin tone was. Is was yeah, but like <laughs> like I I really wanted to be able to like, like I remember looking at it. I'm like, oh, I want to be able to pick out that exact like uh temperature without mm -hmm. color picking and see if i can get it you know and uh, like just to test myself or something and I, I remember uh after painting it for a while that i also see pockets of warmth or like subsurface scattering like you know near in between the the, the shadows or like right underneath her chin there's like this really saturated a uh, ring of like yellow and i really mm. wanted to capture that and then in relation to like a cold temperature around it i wanted to pay more attention to that that was kind of like uh one of the main things i wanted to get out of this study yeah that's a really good kind of uh point that we should kind of elaborate on as well like uh if you find something that is interesting to you and that's what you want to concentrate on for the 90 minutes, go right ahead. You know, it really is all about learning. Um, yeah. I agree. I like how you talk about temperature as well, because I think, um, or at least for me, when I didn't really fully understand how to use color, um, I would just think of it as like, okay, skin tone flash color mm. uh, it's like pale reddish orange yellow somewhere in between there but once you say like oh it's kind of like this part is cool this part is warm then if you want once you like think of it as like um like color is supposed to be relative it does change the way you like um approach things and put things down and instead of just like looking just at the color wheel you're supposed to think of it as like you look at the color wheel and the painting like what works mm. with which color 
So I ho mm. hopefully um, people will be able to like get that part as well. Also, some people might be saying yeah. like uh, a lot of things you guys talk about uh, might seem very kind of advanced or complex, you know, and some of the paintings that they see, wow, these people are really good. I don't know if I belong in the Lightbox Expo Discord channel, right? Or I don't know if I belong doing the uh, Holly Jolly Paintathon. Well, or <laughs> maybe it's like you don't have any artist friends, which happens all the time. Uh, don't worry, you know, that's what the Lightbox Expo uh, Discord channel is for. You can see if you scroll down, you can see it says Holly Jolly Paintathon right here. And it says how it works, looking for a group, uh, help desk. And then there is a voice channel here as well, looking for groups. So you could just hang out there tomorrow. Um, and create your groups in there if you are looking, if you need some help creating your groups as well. And, or if you just don't like your friends anymore, you want to find some new ones, that's a great way too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyhow, uh, we do have quite the group in Discord today. Hey everybody, anybody want to bring up anything on their minds? I think they are all very into the painting. <laughs> this okay. one's a tough one. Yeah, this one's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. I don't blame yeah. you. I had, a, I had a really interesting realization yesterday where I realized I've been doing figures for like a really, really long time, um, just doing a human figure. And then I would go do it with that reference for a long time. And I realized that I just got burnt out doing the same thing over and over. Then I just looked up bats. And I was like, man, bats are cool. Like all these different variations. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering if you guys ever go through periods of doing the same thing and getting burnt out. Oh, hundred percent. It's not like burnout. I just feel frustrated. Like, ah, oh, I painted this before. I feel like I painted this before. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because like also, it's kind of funny because when we're starting to become professional and stuff, it's like. I need to create a style. I need to create a look. That's like the question or the objective so many times. And then you get into your career and you start doing it for a while. And it's like, yeah, you establish that look, that style, and you can't get out of it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, I'm Justin. I would like to ask a question to the artist today. Yeah. Hey, Justin. Hey, um... I didn't really grow up with too many artist friends, and it's even more amazing that all the artists here are Asian. Is there any <laughs> talk about, you know, what Asian beauty looks like, you know, on a on on the medium? Sure. Yeah, um, and where and you know what, we are all still multicultural here, which yeah. is kind of cool right. too, because Mercedes. <laughs> is Japanese and Chuen is in Singapore right now. She's Singaporean and you know, I'm originally, I was born in Taiwan. Um, and you know what? It's, I think the number one thing that people kind of maybe screw up a little bit with Asian beauty is really like the eyes, the eyelids, the eye shadows and the nose. Mm -hmm. but mostly the eyes i would say yeah the mostly mostly the eyes and the nose now here's a question why does she look mixed you know what what visually makes her because it, it does look like um right like in her lineage it's it isn't fully uh asian i guess mm -hmm. right what is it yeah, about like, her that on, looks mixed? On, on that thing. same note, it's like... No, you go ahead. No, no, sorry, sorry, go, go ahead. Oh, no, uh, I was just thinking, like, on that same note, you know, like, how is it we can tell that, uh, like, like uh, what Justin was saying, like, we are all, like, Asians, but then you can tell, like, Mercedes from 
Japan, you know, you know, I'm from Singapore, like, yeah, but there are like these slight nuances in uh, features wise, right? And like, it's kind of like what Bobby is saying, like, how can we tell like, she does look Korean, but then and also like, you know, she's not like purely Korean. Like, well, she's oh, I Thai. think she's Thai. It's an interesting Thai. Yeah, she's, she's Thai. Thai. I know she's like yeah. Thai and Korean, no? No, See, she's clearly Korean. I'm not in. <laughs> And I feel extra good that I'm kind of hip. Oh. Yeah, I, I kind of need that. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah. But uh, I think it's the eyes that kind of like gave her um, a different look. I mean, not like a specific look that kind of distinguished her as like, uh, I guess, m more Thai, like her. Yeah. I like if I cover the head can I still tell that she's kind of like most likely she's mm. not fully Asian I feel like I can I don't know if it's just like it's all in my skin head tone? or something yeah like the skin tone there is something mm -hmm. so subtle with it but kind of specific you know mm. where you can tell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, can you guys mm. tell, do you feel your Asian, your a Asian radar can tell the difference <laughs> between somebody that is Korean, yeah. Chinese, Japanese, you know, or whatever? Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's funny. I think this is very common within, uh, like, Asian people. It's like, you can tell, like, which part of Asia they're from. Uh, I think mainly yeah. because, like, I grew up, like, even though um, my, like, where I live is very diverse. Like we have different cultures from different, like, you know, all over the world. Um, but my friends, like my closest friends are all like, most of them are Asian. And there's like, uh, yeah, I can tell, like if I'm walking down the street, I'm like, oh, I instantly know when they're Japanese. Mm, <laughs> really? Like I, I can tell like, oh, if they're Korean. Um, but then there's like some people where I'm just like, okay, they can either be, uh, from this culture or this culture. So it's, it's very interesting, even though like, we all kind of fall under like, one category, there's like subcategories. <laughs> mm. I, I noticed like when, I, when I had like a long, longer hair, especially like the back, everything's just kind of long, longer. Um, people started to think I was Japanese more, I would get that m much more than when I just had the normal mm. short hair. Right. Like, mm. especially if I had just like a crew cut, everybody would probably <laughs> think I'm from like mainland China. Uh, you know, mm. like we're borderline going into like almost like racist kind <laughs> of details. Water, but, hey, yeah. I, I'm Chinese, so I got to I got to pass, I guess, you know, but like <laughs> um, it is kind of yeah, true. Like when we look at people and it's it's far easier to tell if they still live there because then yep, the, yep. the hair and the fashion, right, mm. become bigger indicators. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Like, like, uh, like, just like must say, you know, like here in Singapore, like, uh, it's like huge population are like uh, Chinese, like racially. And like, even then we can tell like, um, like the Malaysians and Singaporeans are pretty close until they speak and then there's like an accent and then it's like a telltale, you know, you've, you've, you've heard like Zin Ching speak, you know what I mean, yeah, but like, um, but other than that, like we can easily tell if they are like from, uh, from China or like Korea or like Japan, just cause like they bring a bit of their culture with them, you know, in the clothes they wear, in like, you know, I mean, even like anthropologically speaking, like where they come from, like uh, Singapore, there's like only one season, right? So we, we tend to get blunter noses, you really? know, there's a reason why Eurasians and mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, like really? there's a reason why Eurasians and uh, Americans, they have sharper noses or people with uh, where they come from countries with like uh, four seasons. So their body needs to adapt to it and then, you know, I don't kind know. Of <laughs> I like it, but I don't know about that one. I read it one. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like, uh, if you live near water, your nose starts to go higher on your head. Cause then no, 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 I know, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I see that pulling my leg. Yeah, I 
It's like, oh, wow, I can still breathe. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, that's okay. But, you know, like also, anyway. yeah, I, I feel like the biggest indications is definitely clothes and fashion. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a very interesting topic that we just went a huge tangent on. Uh, <laughs> we, we have some good questions in Slido. Let's do some Slido questions and then we'll come back to uh, Discord as well. Okay, so um, this person says, I have to stop drawing because of wrist problems. I can't go to a doctor for now. What do I do with all these ideas in my head and the urge to draw? Ooh. Um, I would write it down. Yeah, I would write your idea down in notes. Um, something that's easy enough for you to remember that specific idea. Mm. And like, because sometimes like ideas, like you, you can't really picture it completely, but it just you you see like a fuzzy image, and um, just that fuzzy image. If you like store that in, you know, writing. Um, it should be able to, or hopefully it comes back to you. And then when, you know, times comes where you can actually draw again, you can like do like little sketches and try to carve out that, uh, specific idea. Or at least that's kind of what I do sometimes. It's like, I don't really know what this idea looks like, but I'm just going to like jot down like how I feel, what it's supposed to make other people feel, um, mm. what are the elements that I want in it and stuff like that. You know, um, that was a great answer. The next question here is from Nighty Mac, better, uh, regular here. CJ Russoto says, uh, what other artists are you planning to stream Nighty Macs with in the future? Say Steven Silver or Steven Silver or Court Jones? <laughs> um, yeah, we'll ask Steven Silver. Um, we just got to figure out our schedule and i'm sure he'd be down and you know could ask mm -hmm. court as well um but who's coming up miss a who are some of the people that are coming up is cynics so, that's yeah be cool. mm -hmm. cynics uh, we also have cody gramstad who is one of our instructors at school so he's actually the one who helped me learn how to paint so it was really awesome just me too painting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was in his yeah. class too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I actually got critiques from him, and he's he's so awesome. Um, and uh, we and we also have Ergo Josh. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, and then there's also Wendy Tan, um, Lyndon Lee, I think Iris or mm -hmm. Iris Kopi. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that would be cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a bunch of artists, and I know Bobby, you reached out to a few other artists, and we're just like waiting for them to get back. Yeah. Um, hey, I put the word out to Zach. Zach Retz, he's uh -huh. he's down too, right? We just gotta figure out a time or something, a day. Mm -hmm. And who else? Who else? Who else? There's there's so many on our hit list there, <laughs> our wish list. <laughs> I, meant, yeah. I meant wish list. <laughs> yeah, it's too many. Yeah, and obviously Schwen again. Yes, please, <laughs> Schwen. I know uh, it's always like, you know, it's a 12 hour difference. So whenever you can yeah. though. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time. But like, who would you guys want on that you guys haven't asked yet? Like, you would um, love to. Yeah. I feel like Craig Mullins' name is gonna come up, but... <laughs> Craig, for sure. Craig oh, right? yeah. That'd be really or like cool. Dice, or like, yeah. Oh, like... totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. Dice Tatsumi. Shelly Wan would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many. Who else would you want, Miss A? Mike McNola. <laughs> Kay Asadera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, uh, everybody, if you want to do me a little favor, um, 
you know, like tag <laughs> K on Twitter or something and like ask her to be on this thing. Because I think it'll take, a, it'll take a lot. It'll take a lot, but I might just do it. Yeah, maybe, maybe if it's coming from other people, she yeah. might be like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to quickly bring up it. Just remember how Bobby, I was telling you yesterday about um, it's funny how when someone who is close to you is trying to like give you advice, like you for oh, some yeah. reason you're just like reluctant to take it. You're just like, eh, I'm okay. But yeah. then if it's coming from like you, Bobby, like telling me like, oh, why don't you do this? I'll be yeah. like, oh yeah, sure, I'll I'll totally try that. <laughs> yeah, like I have a theory. There's like a theory why that's like true because like the people you are close to, you've seen them been proven wrong more, so you doubt their advice more, you know, whereas people that you've always admired or respected, you know, you put them on a pedestal, so whatever they say is like golden, you know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like, yeah. I, I actually think um, it, might, it might come from a place where, uh, I think this was one of the books that I listened to that Bobby, you recommended about like, um, it, it was about like relationships. Uh, I forgot what that book was called. Oh, oh, the, oh, yeah, you read that one? Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I listened to it, but I don't fully remember everything, but I just remember this one part where uh, it mentioned that, like, the reason why we get really defensive with those kinds of things is because we believe that, um, especially our significant other, we want them to, we want to feel like they understand us. So once they say something that is, like, feels like an attack we we just start yeah. being like i thought you understood me like what do you mean like why are you trying to chase me and i think that's kind of where it it comes from so just like not being understood and thinking like you know i thought you knew me <laughs> you know yeah so yeah I, i'm trying to be better with that especially like with my boyfriend <laughs> I forget the name of that book, but the book is it like the premise is really it talks a lot about it talks a lot about men and women, but I really see it as more masculine personalities and more feminine personalities. Mm-hmm. Right? Because there's all sorts of different types of men and women, obviously, different types of people in general. Um but it was very interesting to hear. There was one that totally hit it right on the head, which was like um it was saying one type of personality one type of person they see support as you accompanying them to do whatever they Mm -hmm. need to do right Mm -hmm. and then the Mm -hmm. other type of personality the exact opposite they see support as we are a team we need to get this stuff done so you are going to tackle that i'm going to tackle this and we are supporting each other to get this thing done right Mm -hmm. i'm the latter and that's the Mm -hmm. more like quote unquote masculine version of it and then the more Mm -hmm. quote unquote feminine version personality it appreciates the accompaniment as uh, support and i never knew that at all Mm -hmm. you know i i because i don't my brain just doesn't work that way if somebody's wants to tag along hey great okay that's that's about it i don't it doesn't clue into me as support so mm-hmm. now knowing that, you know, it's like if I say, no, I'm not going to accompany you. Now I understand that that actually means something different when I say that, mm-hmm. as opposed to mm-hmm. me where I'm like, well, you know, even Steven, here we go. I, I did this. You're going to do that. We're all good. We're working as a team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I actually found the, the book. It's called Celebrating Partnership. Ah. Uh, a very hokey kind of uh title but it was good yeah and when you listen to the audible version you're just like this seems like a bit too much but i think like once you're past like the way she talks about certain things i'm just like okay it makes sense and for Mm -hmm. me i love it's kind of like the oh go ahead oh sorry no it's kind of like the love language thing like mm-hmm. how everyone mm-hmm. perceives mm-hmm. or appreciates uh, love and why some people don't don't feel it you know yeah see i really liked it because um 
I like anything that helps me understand other people better, generally. You know, because like, we're in the business of communication. As art, as artists, that is our business. You know, we do it through painting and drawing a lot, you know, many times. But also, if you're in the entertainment industry, um, then all of a sudden, communication becomes even more important. Right, so to understand those different personalities will help you work with different teams that you might not have mm. been able to work with as well before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah Discord uh, community, feel free to jump in at any moment. Anybody want to like add to that or have any thoughts? Or I don't know how to get my relationships fixed at the same time, so I'm gonna have to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> I I really enjoyed that book. It looks super hokey, you know. But yeah. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. yeah I'm like looking at the painting now. It's like we are all choosing. We are all painting in different skin tones. Mm hmm. It's so different. Yeah, I <laughs> felt like mine, I just shifted the warm tones even more, um, you know, on, on her, which in retrospect, you know, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't on purpose. I wasn't concentrating on the, um, on the colors as much as I was on the form because beauty mm -hmm. is all in the form i think uh, far more mm -hmm. than the colors and it's such a delicate balance you you make you, the lips slightly crooked and all of a sudden she's like not as attractive to most people <laughs> you know yeah. stuff like that right like beauty is so much about balance mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hi. Right. Can I ask a... Of course. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, um, I wanted to... I think I might have brought it up to you when we were chatting last night, must say. But I wanted to ask uh, you guys or... or um, the, the sort of transitional period when you're drawing and learning things. So you've... I think you've mentioned it a bit in the past, Bobby, where, um, or in a video, where you've learned something and then it's a matter of trying to apply it. Um, and so what things you draw are sort of, there's a lot of uns uncertainty to what you, you draw, like in regards to say, um, no, sorry, I'm completely mixing up my words. Um, uh, um sorry but are you um, talking about like how to apply what you studied onto like uh, your own personal piece is that like your question uh yeah because i i've been doing a bunch of these 90 minute challenges and i've gotten mm. more accustomed to painting and such now um right, right. Uh, and so what i make is very different to what i made like sort of mm -hmm. like half a year ago now because of because of the 90 minutes um mm. and how i think about what i make and what i apply to it is very different now that's and it's awesome sort of that. that's so awesome to hear so guy uh yeah <laughs> that's so great to hear i've felt the same thing you know like i paint so much more like with so many more varieties of ways so i've been painting quite differently too um and I love the whole thing when we're showing, you know, submissions and people change things up. Like how do you, mm. from Vienna is constantly, he's always changing it. Right. And, but it's like, it's based starting from a reference, right? So as we do these more and more, and as you get more and more confident, Hey, take a chance, put a flower in her hair, you know, to start off with. Right. And then, at some point, maybe change the clothes. And then at some point, maybe change the color palette. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, you know. 
and you just get further and further so away until you're you're doing stuff that's loosely based on the reference and still filled with all of those fundamentals of structure and lighting and materials and all that other good stuff. Um, yeah, yes, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Oh, no worries. No worries. Hey, it's, it's Thursday. It's like my painting, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I like how opaque your your paint is, though, uh, Schwan. Uh, yeah, I remember you were, you were telling me about that, Bobby, and I remember uh, why I was doing that. Like I was like in my head, it's like get it down, you know. You only have ninety minutes, no time to noodle, just block in and groove, and uh, <laughs> you know, get get flat colors down. No no time to build this up in values, you know. Just choose the right one, and then. Uh, play with the relationships uh, of it, you know, and then I think like you can tell now that uh, my value is a little off, you know, it's way too bright. And then, uh, yeah, like Mercedes one is so much more accurate. Yeah, but that's <laughs> that's why, because that's my thinking, you know, and like so much of your thoughts like informs the painting on canvas. It, 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 it tells you what they're thinking, like, you know, like, like what are you thinking, Bobby, at this stage? Um... Yeah, at this stage, what was I thinking? I was thinking of the clothes right now and just like how to get it all down. I do remember thinking that the face looks horrible and that face, I do remember also putting that down upside down because mm. I was having a little trouble with the tilt of the head. Um, so instead, mm -hmm. what I did was I just tilted the whole freaking canvas, did it upside down so it's abstract, right? And I just plopped in those features. Are they right? No, they're not right. You could tell the face is a little wonky. But at least I have something to start off with. And the colors that I'm starting off with to indicate the facial features are not extremely contrasting, which gives me more freedom to change them. And easier to paint mm -hmm. it over and adjust. So, like on that question, how do you rotate the canvas on magma? <laughs> I'm sure people are trying that now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so you can see in the top row there. There's the buttons. The ones on the very right. You can see there's uh, mm -hmm. there's the clockwise button, and then there's the circle that with a little slit. That's to Put things back into mm -hmm. neutral position and then you have the counterclockwise button um yeah or you can use the button to the on the left uh second last from the bottom right yeah thank you yeah those it was actually really helpful you know i had this person say uh it was so funny because i had this person talk all the smack about my my work and then <laughs> said oh and you know oh, you're, yes. t you're telling ah oh, it's just some nobody whatever yeah. or, <laughs> not a nobody he's a somebody whatever he's a person but i don't know i don't know the guy uh and an, he's obviously not a like a high level professional uh -huh. artist because he he thought uh -huh. that the flipping the canvas upside down was was a gimmick and I was like, uh -oh. like a used car salesman trying to push this gimmick on people. And uh -oh. I'm like, okay, uh -oh. yeah. If you think that, then now I know that you're not a high, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. high-ish yeah, level that's... painter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's a so... very important kind mm -hmm. of skill to have to see things almost like as an alien again and not, mm -hmm. not again. It's sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it reminds me of that um that stream we, we had with carla last week and how she talked about like like it like when you flip the canvas it the whole reason is to see everything as shapes yes rather than things and carla mm -hmm. says the same thing when she paints especially during studies she tries to see things in like different shapes that are something completely different from the subject so 
they would just say like a a, a sh uh, sorry the light hitting the subject but then there's like a cast shadow that whole list part like what does it look like does it look like a bird like trying to reach for something with its beak when you see it in that way like a different like a specific shape it's like easier to kind of know the the shape language of of that uh reference yeah. So it's like, like trying to like simplify it down into like distilling it into that that kind of um, approach is like I think it's it makes the picture feel a lot more clear like it communicates it well. I think like John Hardesty also said the same thing in his realism course uh, on schoolism, like yeah. to disassociate from the subject matter and just see groups of like shapes and then with that it's easier to see like how straight is your line compared to that one and then you know yeah it's more approachable that way mm -hmm. the painting becomes more like yeah approachable yeah Craig, Craig says something the same in his course as well I remember when I took that one he would say like as long as the shapes are correct it doesn't matter what type of what color you use as long as shape and value uh, hit the mark, then it's like it communicates it well. Obviously, it's color kind of determines like... the, the 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 temperature and like the mood and all that. But as long as you have those things, you know, um, the painting works out. That's like what Bobby said about the form earlier. Yeah. Do you guys think Craig would do the do one of the thirty day workout workout things? <sighs> Oh yeah, like I would love ways? for him to do that. I actually emailed, yeah. I emailed him. I emailed him. So um, hey, if you want to help um, out, no, nah, actually don't bother, Craig. <laughs> I don't want to send everybody to <laughs> message him or something. Yeah, we don't want to scare Craig. <laughs> yeah. Also, he doesn't have Instagram or Twitter. He has Facebook. I think he, Instagram. I think he does have an Instagram, no, but that's, I, I, that's he's not very imposter. active that that <laughs> or it's not a like it's a f super fan or something like that it's oh not, really it's, yeah it's not craig it says official craig mullins account. oh really right it, um... you know yeah oh. but I, I i think he did make a completely That's separate funny. account where it's just his instagram account is just a photo of his ceiling so far <laughs> oh yeah oh. Yeah, it's funny. Okay, I've been following the wrong Ooh. person. Yeah, he made one like two weeks ago <laughs> yeah. or a week ago Oh, no yeah. way. But it has no art so far because I think he's trying to figure out um, how to put his like amazingly beautiful image. But then obviously Instagram is a square. So it like Actually, limits him. Yeah. yeah, it's Craig P. Mullins. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't know his other account was a super fan. Nice. <laughs> Would love to have him uh, mm -hmm. do an artist workout thing. Totally. Mm -hmm. I'm actually working on one right now um, oh. for animals. Yeah, where I'm like I'm, I'm doing like really quick sketches with animals and stuff. You guys want to see a little bit of it? Show a little. Ooh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Masay, Ma you've never seen any of this either. Yeah, I, uh, this is my first time hearing it. Yeah, because I just been. We we're just talking about this this morning, where it's like every time I find a little bit of free time <laughs> in my hand on my hands, I always end up just filling it with more stuff, and I gotta kind of stop doing that. But this one is really fun. Um, I'm really excited about this one as well so it's gonna take a little while to load we could talk about other stuff in the meantime is it creatures or animals animals um so really you're gonna see a super duper sneak peek um nice. i haven't decided yet <laughs> i think this is most likely it's just gonna be animals for now because creatures that get so imaginative it gets so much harder it can get real difficult mm -hmm. so yeah here, let me show you let me show you here um i'll have to well yeah let's keep talking about other things and i'll 
I'll let you know when I'm ready. So maybe we can go to a Slido question, or if anyone on sure. Discord has a question. Yeah, sure, Discord. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So, like, when you render, because I know you, you render very like, in the hierarchy in a way. Like, how do you, if you mess up? I mean, you wouldn't mess up, but like, if you were to go back, how would you? change it to like have it still be grouped and then I don't know if that makes sense hmm. like when you're like doing a, a part of the feather maybe they're not in the value range you want oh uh like adjusting values is that what you're kind of saying or yeah I think so yeah you know, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I was telling my schoolism students on my schoolism digital painting class, I was telling them that um, w one of the most common questions that I get asked is like, how do you start? What is the, th oops, my Zoom just crashed. Don't worry, I'll get back on there. Okay, here it goes. That was weird, that was the first time. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I was saying, you know, like one of the most common questions is what colors do you start off with? How do you start kind of thing? Um, and so I was telling everybody how I think about it now, because I'm just going direct into color constantly, is that I go, uh, what kind of color would I use if this was a 2D image? Right. If this was a 2D image that I, um, I'm just going to fill in with one color, what would that color be so that this illustration would still look okay? Like everything would look still normal. You know what I mean? Like it would fit in. And that's the color I generally will start off with now. Does that make sense? And now I forget what the um, <laughs> So you do a local color. So you go back to the local color. I, you know, what is local color? You know, like, uh, say, say most of this thing is, most of this painting, it's in, um, it's getting lit by the ambient color of the night, right? And then we have this yeah. strong light on her. So do you start off, what, what would the local color be in this case? Would it be the, the color of the night? You know, like probably not it would be whatever the effect of, of that local light hitting this thing now and that color mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm sense. making sense but you know like when you're looking at nicely painted backgrounds you know look at any like Miyazaki movie these nicely painted backgrounds and what what paints are they using the solid color for their characters that would be the color that I would start off with painting and that's how I kind of think about things now. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. So you want to see this thingy here? This sure. is my, uh, the class that I've been working on, you know, five in the morning and stuff. So the idea is uh, gesture drawing. I'm going to explain how I do gestures and I give everybody a little bit of time in the beginning to start the drawing first before they see how I'm going to start it. And it's just real time, mm. right? It's like a one minute little drawing of a monkey head. And I go through the process of what is happening in my head. That is the most important thing. Like, what am I thinking of as I'm trying to draw this in a minute? And essentially it's like, what are the most important notes of this subject that I wanna jot down, I wanna make note of i i want to remember right like a quick squiggle in the ear i'm not mm -hmm. looking to kind of land those exact shadows i'm trying to give a feeling of like there's a not if you know it feels like really lumpy in the ear <laughs> pretty much i'm trying to do something very quick like that same thing with the eye right i'm not trying to draw an eyeball uh mm -hmm. i'm just trying to put down the most important thing about the eye which is the eye area 
and then it just goes into more and more. But then afterwards, I go into stuff like, okay, here's a two minute drawing right beside a three minute drawing, right? Which gets kind of interesting too. And I'm not sure why I can't see the full drawing there, but it, it was really interesting to kind of just see, uh, maybe I can pull this drawing over a bit because it was kind of neat just to see them all and the differences you know at this point this is like cool. 30, 30 seconds oh yeah yeah and then we get into like complex stuff like how are you going to deal with three mm -hmm. characters and a little baby monkey and you're drawing this in one minute right so the answer was mm -hmm. don't do the faces yeah these are cool i think this is really important for uh artists to see especially like people who get like too caught up in all the details it's yeah. like how do you get the message across very fast exactly everybody knows me for like rendered stuff so i want <laughs> to show right. them this kind of stuff right it's like after one minute what's the difference between my uh one minute sketch which is right here in the middle versus my two minute sketch mm. at the one minute awesome. mark right i'm just you can tell i'm just spending a tiny bit more time on accuracy on the ac exact kind mm. of shapes that i want to put down um but it's almost the same and then afterwards mm -hmm. well this one I'm slide that over and then afterwards, what else are you going to apply? Mm. It's like totally. choosing your upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then this one, it's like that bird is so loose because this is a one minute drawing. But you can see my two minute mm -hmm. drawing. I'm spending more time on the accuracy of the bird. Mm. So it's just really interesting to see. And then we kind of we do all these sketches together. That's. That's the idea right now in my head, anyways. So. Cool. It's it just reminds it reminds you of life drawing where you you have to do like a drawing in thirty seconds, and the yeah. next is one minute, then two, yeah. then ten. But it's nice yeah. when it's like the same subject because then it's like uh, the first thirty seconds or a minute is the most important part because you're establishing the the whole shape. And then it's like the once essence. you understand that, then after, like when you redo it again with longer time, it's like you know that, and then you can focus a bit more on like communicating other parts of the the reference. Totally, um, and it was it was very interesting just for me to see because have you ever compared a one minute drawing that you did to a two minute drawing? No, right? We don't do that. When I got to put it side by side, I got to kind of see what I was doing and then analyzing mm -hmm. that. That was very interesting. Yeah. I can't wait to get into like the five minute pose, the 10 yeah. minute pose, you know, and then the full on like hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's like studying your own method. Yeah. Yeah. And the interesting <laughs> thing about it is like after studying it, then I know more about the things that I was doing subconsciously. And now because of that, I'm able to use that info to kind of further progress and sharpen mm. the things that I was doing subconsciously. Does it help you paint more suggestively? Uh, you think? I, th I feel like I guess maybe in a tiny way, but it's more of like um, getting more and more familiar with my potential because that's a part of this 90 minute art challenge as well. It's like, okay, you could, we could all, the three of us, we could all paint this painting till it looks like the painting, like the photo until it's super, super real and especially at a distance like this, you wouldn't really be able to tell. I know the three of us could all do that, but what can we do in 90 minutes, right? And mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Like, are you overshooting? Are you undershooting? 
it's far better to overshoot, I think. And then you could just add more stuff. You could add the other girls in there or something afterwards. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole entire idea of time, right? Uh, Shwen and Masay, like the time allotted for this, that mm. is very important for this exercise. And uh, mm. you notice it, don't you? very crucial i remember like just like maybe like 10 minutes before this bobby you were telling me oh shen you you're so daring you haven't got the face in and we only have like 30 minutes i was like what <laughs> wait what and then i'm like oh sh okay get the eye uh, you know i remember like i was totally caught up in like getting out of stuff done and then i forgot that the whole painting fails on the whole without any kind of indication with like a blank horror film version of a face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked over and I saw my face, oh my god, the face is done. She's just adding jewels on the sh like shirt and I'm like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, yeah. <clears throat> well, I, like, I don't have all of those colors for the clothes right now. You know, but I was like, I just really want to do the face some justice also because mm -hmm. the f you know like I could paint women and stuff but it's just I'm like creatures and animals I could do that with my eyes closed kind of thing you know so it, it was a bit I f felt like the, the learning outcome from concentrating on the face would be better uh, better served yeah concentrate on the face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions in Discord or anything? Looks like we have a lot of questions in Slido. Oh, I, sure. I have a... Oh, yeah, sure. So, would you paint this painting differently? Now, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now I feel... Like... I feel pretty confident I would tear this up big time because uh, this was like a couple weeks ago or yeah <laughs> i forget this, this painting feels old yeah i'm looking forward yeah. to uh, showing if you, if you had more time things. oh uh, if i had more time i think i, I would think of, i would be more careful with the colors of the skin I didn't mean to mm -hmm. make it like hue uh, mm -hmm. shift. It's just I wasn't concentrating on that. Mm -hmm. What about you, uh, Chuan or Masay? Masay. Oh, oh, me? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so lately I've been trying this thing where um, I like the last painting that we did with Cody and you know it's going to be streaming in January mm. in the new year but um I've been trying this thing where I like it it happens in a lot of like um like the schools and classes where the teacher tells you like okay simplify the values by blocking it into like just black gray and white so I think if I were to do this again I would love to like see how it would turn out if I just made because like if you squint you see that her skin tone is the lightest value so if I block that whole shape out and just leave that on a separate layer and then put all the dark values which is like her clothes and the building behind her into one layer and then the mid value would be the the sky and some of her like you know the accessories on her clothes and then trying to like um uh, use those shapes and then try to add like subtle value differences to them to kind of like uh, achieve a certain look. I I think I would try. I would if I were to do this again, I would you know do it that way. I love that we are painting mm. Lisa from Blackpink because I would never. I I didn't even know. <laughs> you know, I don't <laughs> even know this group really. I don't know any of their songs or whatever. And I just love the fact that I don't need to think about what to paint. That mm. Masay's already figured it out or whatever. I just come in and I'm like, <laughs> all right, okay, let's try to paint this. All right. 
Yeah, I, I love Korean music videos. Like some of them can be very cheesy, but like the colors and the fashion that they like choose is is so fun. <laughs> so hopefully people are enjoying the references and I, I try to switch it up, you know, like there's there's girls, there's guys, there's animals, landscapes and all that. So it's 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 good to kind of like get out of our comfort zone especially for me like with environments like i i'm not an environment artist but it's nice to mm -hmm. you know force myself to do things i'm uncomfortable with yes <laughs> seek discomfort uh there's this youtube channel that i like called yes theory and that's mm -hmm. their slogan to seek discomfort they do all sorts of really like they started off by doing things like uh sneaking into the premiere of la la land you know and just like finding <laughs> any way to do it and they got some kahunas on them because they actually get it done but nowadays <laughs> they do more like um less kind of juvenile pranky kind of stuff but more like inspiring things you know mm. yeah it's like making like talking to strangers and you you know becoming friends with them yeah and they had this one mm. where they or they have two where they go and visit Wim Hof the ice man uh mm. yeah and they they really seek discomfort holy cow like uh being in ice water for like over 10 minutes jeez that's insane yeah you did that too not 10 minutes yeah you're okay oh it was 10 minutes yeah. i thought you guys did it uh well no we we had to he filled up a big a big inflatable pool a big one and filled it up with like hundreds of bags of ice and then we all took turns sitting in the pool full of ice cubes not even ice water like ice cubes mm -hmm. and we'd have to sing a song before we get out <laughs> so it's probably like about two something minutes but i felt uh, what did you fine. sing bobby uh i think it was like somewhere over the rainbow he made us sing <laughs> It was great though. I got a little picture. I got a little picture with Wim Hof. I was like one of the first to ask, like K and I. So we got a picture, and then everybody else was like turned away because all of a sudden everybody wanted a picture. Good times. <laughs> I've seen that photo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had a beanie on with a little like propeller on the top of his head. Um, here's a good question from Julia. If you plan on selling your art, how do you use references, landscapes, animals? Is it okay to copy from royalty free images you find online? Uh, Unsplash is where we go. Unsplash.com. Mm -hmm. We are not affiliated. We just use it as a resource. Uh, everything on there is not just copyright free. It's commercial, commercially uh, free to use. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when she says copy, um, I hope it's more like you take parts of it, you copy parts of it, not like the whole image because um, yeah, that's true. I feel like when it doesn't really become your art, it just becomes a copy of someone else's, I guess, art, which is photography. And it's totally um, like cool I, to do for yourself to study, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm all about mm -hmm. that. Or if yeah. you took the photograph yeah. yourself. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, like um, I have nothing against like copying photographs because I do a lot of um, photo studies and stuff. It's just, uh, I feel like there's a lot of benefit from taking parts of things and making it your own. Yeah. yeah. There's almost like this thing where it's like you see something, a beautiful piece of art, and you're like, wow, that looks great. And then you see the reference later on, and you're like, oh <laughs> like almost like your your grade that you give it has just dropped like all of a sudden like oh uh and i think that's kind of what like stops pe some people from like wanting to use references because they think it's like some sort of 
cheat or like mm -hmm. it's like oh this is really coming from me and, and it's weird i like like i only bring this up because um i i find reference like uh very important for my personal stuff even like you know professional stuff because uh what we do does come from real life and if it doesn't represent real life and sort sort a certain degree it's like um people might not feel as connected to it so uh, yeah, hopefully uh, people don't get scared away from using reference. But I totally know what you mean by like, when you see the reference, you're like, oh, okay, so maybe it's not like super, you know. Hello, Bobby. Yeah. Hey, Kofi. Kofi. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to chip in a little bit on the question the individual asked. And basically, she can check out Austin Cleon's book, Feel Like an Artist where he kind of breaks down how to like go about stealing, but not in the bad way, because there's good ways of stealing and bad ways of stealing. And what I realized from reading that book is like, the word originality is a, is a myth. Usually we take stuff that is in the world around us and we mix it and blend it into a new and interesting way, because you can't create out of a vacuum. So I'll, I'll definitely suggest Austin Cleon's book, Steal Like an Artist. Awesome. Yeah, it's an awesome yeah, book. book. <laughs> I have that book and I unintentionally stole that from my friend. I still need to give that book back. <laughs> you literally stole yeah. his book. Yeah, oh, well, he, he lent it to me. It's just I haven't given it back. So I kind of stole it from him. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, when I was in college, a good buddy of mine, he gave me this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. And I just kept mm -hmm. that book for the longest time, not reading it. And <laughs> years later, it becomes my favorite book, like ever. I probably read that book now at least 10 times, at least. This makes you want to be a good mm -hmm. person. It's not just how to become effective. But yeah, mm -hmm. books, awesome. Mm -hmm. Love them. Let's see. Let's get to another question here. Anybody have a question in uh, in Discord over there, or want to chime in on anything? What's They're on so your focused. mind, Kofi? Oh, are you gonna be or what? We have a. Question. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say we have a few more minutes. I think so. Oh just shoot! Giving a heads up, to people. Right, right. We are almost done. Uh, so get on it, look for anything at the very end. You can see I, I'm starting to do all the colors on this shirt. I definitely remember this, just going, ah! <laughs> and, yeah, so she with her shirt and like jewels. But... Yep, you did a great job with that, I say. I remember seeing that and just going, ah! <laughs> 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 that, that, was, that was definitely the part where I'm just like, I'm so excited to get to, but like, the beginning part like if i don't establish all this there's no point adding in all those like i guess the cherry on top there's no point add having a cake putting the cherry and then putting the whipped cream around the cherry you know <laughs> i was proud of my face though i was proud of the face you know it didn't take me that long uh or i didn't spend that much time on it but you know it wasn't like a straight on shot the head's a little small colors are a little off but overall yeah i like that part yeah looks awesome and the d and the s you know on the bottom there of the shirt i was a little proud of that too if i was to be totally <laughs> transparent <laughs> it's like oh yeah good good job bobby that looks pretty good looks like a d and yeah an and it's like you didn't complete the letters but you can tell it's those letters that's what's really all about for me with these 90 minute art challenges. Like right after I feel so kind of like, I feel good. And I just want to do more art. Mm -hmm. That's right. like, that's a best feeling to have. It's like when you finish the piece and you're just like, I want to work on more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. Like also, just doing these has really helped me 
get through quarantine really as well mm-hmm. you know i remember the very first days of quarantine first day and a half it didn't take that long just because i don't know there's something internal in me that kicks in and just goes hey stop feeling sorry for yourself uh but yeah i remember like kind of feeling sorry for myself this first couple like day and a half or so um and then just realizing you know life isn't about waiting for the sunny days you know it's about enjoying the day right now whatever it is we are living right and we are in this reality where we are on a tiny little marble flying through the air and space around a giant fireball How's this all happening? I don't know, but we all get to witness it, and that's pretty awesome. So no matter what slice of life we have, you know, it's it's pretty Mm -hmm. cool. (laughs) I like looking at it from that perspective. Um, I do want to go to this last question on Slido. This seems like a, a good question, maybe to end off the stream. So CJ Rosoto asks, how often do you guys get out of your comfort zone in the present compared to before? Um, yeah. For me, it's easy. It's so much more, so much more because I'm painting things that I wouldn't choose to paint and, and mm-hmm. I'm doing them in all sorts of different ways, just experimenting and growing. What yeah. About, what about you guys? I, I feel the same. Um, especially like painting is like, and colors before was not my comfort zone. And I don't know, it's kind of like a weird time. Um, even though like, you know, we're still living, like things are still going on, but because quarantine feels like time kind of stopped, um, it kind of gave me a chance to be like, oh, okay, um, I'm home. I have a bit more time. Like, what can I do with this time to like do something that I wouldn't normally do? Because in normal life, uh, quote unquote normal life, I would have like other obligations like um, and other things that I would need to do. But now that I have this this extra um, yeah time of the day, it's like, what can I do that I've always wanted to get to? So that's probably one of them for me. Mm, for me, I think like uh, I, I do like the the least 90 minutes challenge among the both of you you guys are like i don't know how many times you guys do it like a week but yeah like even with this one like i remember the previous one like i i, I deliberately chose like an environmental landscape scene because i know i would suffer like, like yeah <laughs> and i did yeah and then this one like <laughs> I, I i remember thinking like you better get that buildings in at the back don't just do your like three quarter portrait thing you know <laughs> yeah uh, so like maybe a little bit by a little bit uh per study you know like like mm-hmm. start from your comfort zone is still like a figurative thing and then slowly add in the environment slowly uh, with the next study uh choose a different lighting you know expand it like 10 percent per study you know i'm still at that stage you know mm-hmm. yeah. well I, I would also like to kind of uh explain to people something here that out of the many people i know shuan really loves kind of punishment uh challenging herself (laughs) you know like she pushes herself so freaking much it's really like i'm telling her to slow down and i shouldn't be like i'm the last person to tell people to slow down (laughs) Because I love going fast. I love, you know, working to my potential and all this stuff. Uh, Yeah, so you always are kind of like a glutton for punishment. And the other thing about this that I want to mention is that, Shwen, I believe like later, you painted this painting again just for your own sake. And you did a really awesome job. And this one, you were, you know we were talking and stuff and uh, through the talking you're like i don't really like this piece that much and then i i said to you do you want to do it again and you said no and that's the type of person shwen is you know it's like she just loves (laughs) 
punishment and like challenging and all that stuff the perfect ingredients for uh for a good artist as long as you're not too down on yourself you know as long as you're not too down because like coming from someone like you are Marseille, who I know, oh, I always think it's way more disciplined than I am, you know, to hear you guys tell me to rest or something. Like, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this out there is like, like thinking the same, same thing, you know, like if someone that you really respect and admire and who you think is like way more disciplined than you is telling you like, you need to rest as well, you need to slow down. Like, I think coming from both of you, like, it's a good reminder, you know, yeah, for mental health or like, yeah, mm-hmm. you. Know. <laughs> but sometimes you'll still like you you still message yeah, me or something. It's like it's three in the morning over there. What? How is she messaging me? Jeez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's it's funny how like I I feel like this is common with other artists, but like taking a break means doing art that you're comfortable doing. Like for me, yesterday I was do like I was um doing a drawing and taking a break um and that was like Mm -hmm. um that was like my way of resting and it's just funny because it's like I should be resting like you know from art not like yeah so yeah I I just thought it was you feel guilty though you know yeah yeah it's such an interesting kind of topic as well like the whole entire idea of rest versus like working Mm. hard you know because like Mm. I would never it's like one of those things where it's like the things that I did to get good I would never wish them on my children or something like that if I ever have kids like Mm. even though that Mm. those hardships is what got me my skills You know, and I hear this so much from so many other people. Like when we had Hari on here talking about growing up with no shoes and like being just like um, ostracized because he didn't speak German in Vienna or whatever, like all these things. Mm -hmm. And all Mm -hmm. these things have created such an amazing person with such amazing character and and, uh, reserve and all this stuff. But would he wish that on his kids? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Right? It's mm-hmm. an interesting kind of thing. You this know? is why you guys teach, right? Because you figure out this out. Mm. Teach what? Like, that's kind of why like people like you guys teach because you already figured it out. So you mm-hmm. feel like if I can help someone else not have to go through the same thing, and still get there because I already figured it out, you know, take this knowledge, you know, go mm. with it. You don't have to figure it out because I figured it out. Well, I definitely remember uh, when when I was just starting off and stuff and really started to hear a bunch of professional artists talk in depth into painting and how valuable that was. So that's something that we definitely have been trying to uh, give back to everybody else by doing these challenges and talking about how we're painting, what are we thinking about, the things that we're nervous about, how we think about the painting and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you want to be an artist, everybody, really, I, I highly recommend, I couldn't recommend enough. Um, schoolism is like a turbo boost rocket on your on your back, but if you don't have the means, highly recommend you just join us for these free 90 minute art challenges because that's the purpose of them we want to really get everybody painting and getting everybody to their potential right Mm -hmm. i thrive Mm -hmm. off of kind of encouraging other people as well so Mm -hmm. anyhow why don't we do some last thoughts here about uh the painting does that sound good yeah. Enlarge it as well. Oh, could start off with Masse. How about that? Since you're on the <laughs> very end there. Yeah, I, I personally, I kind of like the way I made her face. It was like a bit, uh, you know, caricature, like cartoon, like a bit stylized in my own way. Um, 
But yeah, I think the most fun I had was like the the top and how like um, I was able to capture that like shininess because of like these uh, because of the values I used. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were to yeah, like I said before, if I were to do this again, I think I I'd like to um, block down the values a lot quicker to kind of like establish the whole look first and then like focus a bit more on color and you know all the subtleties but yeah this was this is a fun one Shwen, mm. last thoughts mm, i think for me like like looking at this like uh yeah i pushed the, the cool unintentionally it was it's like way way too cool <laughs> Not that yeah, much. It's, it's like a value a, of uh but it's a tiny shade, Juan. You're so tough yeah. on yourself. I'm yeah, I think it looks great. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but like like I can tell like it's interesting because I remember staring at it. I saved this one and then I could tell like almost say really wanted to get that top. She really wanted to understand the top and you know, and for me, it was the skin tone. And Bobby is always about the overall thing, and like how it's not, he always starts from the middle. And then it it reminds me, right? Like, it 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 reminds me to uh, do different things or different approaches. Like, uh, like if I were to do this again, I would push the gesture a bit more. Like right now, I think she looks a little slack. She doesn't have that uh, devil make hair kind of attitude and i think that's a little bit missing yeah i will try to push the attitude a bit more maybe yeah the expression on her face i thought was the most challenging she kind of looks sleepy but you're not trying to draw a sleepy person there right you're trying to draw mm -hmm. a dreamy person there she's yeah, kind of just true. almost like daydreaming as she's kind of like there and yeah that when I started this, the thing in my head, the message in my head that was the strongest was like, she's a good looking person. Do not mess up her face, <laughs> right? And don't mm -hmm. make her into one of your creatures, Bobby. Got to keep this together. <laughs> that would be interesting though, actually. <laughs> that was the biggest thought in my head. So as I tackled this, I spent a good deal on that face. Um, the angle of the head was what I found the most challenging, but definitely flipping it upside down, just looking at the shapes and matching up the shapes and stuff to help that initial, the initial painting uh, was very beneficial. If I was to do this again, I would be more cognizant of the colors that I chose because I was far more, uh, I was putting far more emphasis on the structure uh, because mm. you know you get the shapes right she's still gonna look she's still gonna look good you you mess mm. up the colors uh it, she'll still look kind of good you mess up the structure mm. uh mm. yeah mm. it's harder mm -hmm. uh, my favorite thing is something mm. inspired by Masse. i looked over at Masse's the the top that she was drawing and i was like dang i gotta do that too so i started doing it as well <laughs> mm. And it's funny because mm. that, is, the D and the S is probably the thing that I like the most about this because that's the most fun to kind of just slop in there mm. <laughs> out of the whole painting. That's weird. Um, the thing that I would do differently about this is I would also uh, make sure that I, I kind of schedule my time better because you could see... Mm on the right hand side that inner part of the jacket is completely undone it's just a mm. shape right now mm. little sloppy no but it's within 90 minutes to put down all that information is is very difficult such and a I think, challenge yeah I, I and i hope that people realize like you know in these challenges you don't necessarily need to complete it and make it perfect it's like as long as you focus on one thing that you want to learn mm. and w once you achieve that it's like that's that's a huge win so mm. Mm. yeah hopefully mm. people don't take these kinds of things in the like too much of a competitive way you know <laughs> yeah. 
and yeah. take it more of like a fun learning experience that we're all doing together. Such okay. a good thing to like mention. Thanks, Masay. Like, yeah, this mm -hmm. is not comp. Whenever we do this, we're just chatting. We're we're hanging out. We're catching up. It's yeah. not competitive <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yeah, just because we're painting beside each other doesn't mean that we have to be competitive. You know, you work out mm. with somebody at the gym, you're you're not necessarily competitive with them either. Uh, mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. Yeah. And on that note, I also just wanted to bring up again, this is going to be good next or tomorrow, I should say. Tomorrow. Join us. Okay, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, 9 p.m. Pacific time for the Holly Jolly Paintathon on Discord. It's going to be awesome. 24 hours of painting. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. You wake up, you come to Discord, you're going to see us painting, all the groups painting their, their painting together, doing something awesome and collaborative. Winner will be winners, the group that does the, you know, the selected painting will be invited to do a collaboration where Masay and I will be painting with the group as well, creating a painting together and doing a live stream. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Anything else uh, before we go? I think we're pretty much good, right? Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, this was really fun. Thank you so much to everybody in the stream, everybody on Facebook, YouTube, in the Discord, the mods of Discord. Thank you so much for keeping mm -hmm. everything together and such a wonderful, friendly yeah. environment. Uh, and of course, my amazing co-host, Masei Seki, and my other amazing, uh, you know, today's honor.